So very good evening uh, to all the brothers. <clears throat> so last week uh, we studied about uh, Lord's uh, second coming, <clears throat> the manner of his uh, second coming. We saw <clears throat> that uh, uh, Jesus uh, is now in a divine nature. So Jesus was uh, resurrected in angelic nature, and the Lord, uh, uh, the reward that was given to Jesus was uh, divine nature. So uh, we might wonder why God had uh, given him. Uh, uh, you see, uh, the resurrection in the angelic nature and later on, why did he give him the divine nature? Or else we might get a question uh, that uh, he could have, uh, uh, you see, uh, risen as an angelic nature itself and uh, he could have been there in that angelic nature itself. So why <clears throat> this uh, uh, provision God had made, if you see, actually uh, the Lord <clears throat> had a plan in his mind that... Uh, uh, you see, he wanted a group of people to be with him in his own nature. <clears throat> he wanted to have his own family, own family of the divine nature. <clears throat> so that is the promise uh, which actually God has made to the church. <clears throat> that uh, uh, he that overcomes shall sit on my throne, uh, even as I have also overcome and sat on his throne. So that is the, you see, the pleasure which uh, Lord Almighty wanted to always give to his children, <clears throat> the uh, promise of the divine nature. See, actually, Jesus, when uh, he was on earth, he actually prayed to the Lord that the uh, Lord may restore him back to his uh, same nature, uh, that means the uh, angelic nature. Uh, you see, uh, in... Uh, uh, <clears throat> John, uh, John, from John, Uh, John 17, 5. Can somebody read? <clears throat> John 17, 5. Ah. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Okay. Jesus request was to just glorify him uh, to the previous uh, uh, nature. Previous nature, Jesus was in angel nature. He just requested for that nature itself. But uh, God has promised uh, excellent uh, nature. <clears throat> and that is the nature of the, you see, the highest of all, the divine nature. So this was the promise actually uh, God had uh, promised to his uh, faithful children. That's what actually God gave it to Jesus. <clears throat> he says, see, Hebrews first chapter. <clears throat> Hebrews first chapter. Verse uh, 3 and 4, brother. Hebrews 1, 3 and 4. Correct. Who, who being the brightness of its glory and expressed image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Ah, being made so the much... Wait, wait, wait. That is the reward. See, when he had purged all sins, what was the reward God gave him? He sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. That was the reward actually God gave it for the faithfulness of Jesus. Next. Uh. <clears throat> Being made so much better than the angels oh. as he had by inheritance of a more excellent name than they. Much better than the angels. So now he is much higher than the angels. This is the reward uh, uh, God had given to Christ. And uh, uh, he was uh, actually, you see, on the 40 days, uh, he was an angelic nature. 
Why? For what purpose, sir? So that he might appear to the disciples in various forms and prove to them that Jesus is no more in the flesh, that he is resurrected. <clears throat> but uh, in the case of uh, Apostle Paul, he did not appear in the same. This one, <clears throat> he appeared as a uh, sun, uh, brighter than the sun at the noon day. So, okay. Anyway, so these are the things uh, <clears throat> that we studied last week. So, uh, last week we clearly saw, <clears throat> that means uh, the uh, purpose of uh, Lord's uh, second coming, that uh, you see, and uh, we studied uh, why Jesus' second coming is going to come, and the general expectations also we saw, and we also saw in the last week how Jesus actually comes. And this week we are going to see how to identify Jesus. If he is going to come invisibly in a spirit uh, being, so how to identify the spirit uh, being uh, Jesus, who is in a divine nature, how to identify? So it is only by the signs that we can identify. Therefore, the disciples, when they came and questioned our Lord, they asked him in Matthew 24, he is saying, Lord, <clears throat> when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming? They asked for a sign. They did not ask for any, you see, uh, visible appearance, they, but they asked for the sign. And immediately, Jesus never, uh, you see, uh, corrected their thought, uh, saying, you are asking for a sign. It's a very wrong thing. You see, you see me directly from the heaven, I'll be landing here and there. He did not say all those things. That's an easy answer to give. But yet, uh, Jesus did not give that answer. But he said, if anybody says uh, that uh, <clears throat> I am in the desert, I am come visibly, you see, uh, to everybody's eyes in the desert, don't believe it. <clears throat> and if anybody says that I am in the secret chamber, it appeared only to a few people, only they can see, you see, don't believe it. Therefore, dear brethren, so the signs are given to identify the invisible presence of our Lord. Therefore, what is the meaning of a sign actually? See, <clears throat> in the railway station, <clears throat> we have a platform. Before the train comes, you know, there's actually a sign board that shows uh, actually the train number which is arriving at so and so time. So that sign is a significance, it is a, it is a clear, beautiful sign showing that uh, the train uh, is uh, supposed to come uh, very, you see, at the correct time and is going to land at the same platform. So similarly, dear brethren, when Jesus said uh, about Matthew 24 chapter, he said about a beautiful signs. And uh, you see, what is the main thing uh, <clears throat> that uh, Jesus gave about the sign? Matthew 24, 27, brother. Can somebody read, brother? Matthew 24, 27. Home, brother? You're there? <clears throat> yes. Uh, okay, now my audio is clear. 27. 24, 27. Yes. For as the lightning come out of the east and shine even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the son of the man be. Okay. He shall uh, come like a lightning that cometh out of the east, you think, sir. You see? Now you tell me, huh? what is our uh, second coming of Jesus going to be? It is going to be like lightning, it seems. Sir. Now you see, this is how the lightning comes, sir. <clears throat> Correct, no? But what does the verse say? As the... Huh? Read with it again. As the... Hmm. Comes as, as a lightning is. Hmm. I read think. Read the verse on Bible. For the lightning come hmm. out of the east hmm. and sign even unto the west. See, now this is lightning actually. That is, uh, you see, uh, lightning here, there. Do you think that uh, lightning is coming exactly from the east to the west? Is the lightning coming exactly from east to west? No, no. No, there is no direction. Lightning comes randomly from any direction. You see, it comes suddenly, it goes suddenly. Then, so which is the thing that comes exactly from the east to the west? You see, Jesus is not actually speaking about the word lightning here. The word <clears throat> actually signifies, you see, there is a light uh, which uh, shines from east to west, it seems. As the light shines from east to west, 
similarly shall be the second coming of Jesus himself. Therefore, the Greek word that is used for bright shining here is from astrape. Astrape means bright shining. Now you tell me, which is the bright shining that shines from east to west? Is it lightning or sun. what is it? Very good. Sun. sun. Yes, <clears throat> that is the sun. Okay, that's what Jesus is referring to. As the sun rises from east to west, so shall the coming of the son of man be. Now, is uh, anywhere Jesus compared to sun in the Bible? Hmm? Yes. Yes, where? Very good, where? Uh, Malachi 4. Very good, brother. Malachi 4 to the sun of righteousness will arise with healing with his wings. So, the sun of righteousness, how will he come at the second advent? You see, and make everybody understand his presence. It is like the sun. Now, does the sun come? Does it come immediately huh? in a second? No. Though the day begins at midnight, 12 o'clock, the sun is only visible early in the morning. Then, slowly visible to some more people in the morning, around 9 a.m. But uh, by the time it is noon, it is clearly visible to, you see, majority of the people. Dear friend. Therefore, the early morning, <clears throat> you see, that represents the first, you see, uh, presence of our Lord, the first signs of our uh, second uh, presence of our Lord. And the Greek word used for the run, you see, is uh, parousia. And uh, as the sun, uh, you see, uh, rises uh, by 9 o'clock in the morning, majority of the people can see. That actually, you see, represents the second stage of our Lord's uh, no? second presence. And that is called as epiphania in the Greek. That word actually signifies bright, shining. And by noon, as everybody can see, that the uh, sun will be upon the top of the head. So, this is the final stage of the Lord's second coming, where everybody will be clearly understanding that uh, they are living in the Lord's state. It will be totally revealed to everybody. And that Greek word used here is, is apocalypsis. You know what's the meaning of apocalypsis? Apocalypsis means reveal. The thing which is already there, it was hidden. But now it is able to be, you see, clearly revealed, understood, exposed. You see, therefore, uh, in the book of Revelation, we see, you know, Revelation. In the same uh, uh, Greek uh, Bible, the book of Revelation is actually mentioned as, you know, uh, book of Apocalypse. Apocalypse is not that. The thing which was already there, it was hidden, but now it is quite clearly revealed. So, let us learn about these three stages of our Lord's uh, second presence. See, the word <coughs> parousia, the first Greek word, which represents the first stage of our Lord's uh, second coming, it is actually parousia. Now, paro what is the meaning of parousia? If you see, parousia means presence. You see, parousia means presence. Like, for example, if you go to the school, they take attendance. No? How do they take attendance? Roll number one. Eh? What do the students tell? Present, madam. Roll number two. Present, madam. Roll number three. Present. That's what they say, no? no present means what? Madam, I'm here only. Not that I'm coming very far. Similarly, if the same attendance is taken in a Greek classroom, you know, what will the teacher call? The teacher tell, huh? roll number one. You know, what will the student say? Parosha, madam. Parosha means what? I am here, not that I am coming. <clears throat> you see, dear brother, and this is the actually meaning of word parosha. You see, see that uh, word parosha. <clears throat> you see, in uh, Matthew twenty-four chapter, he is actually uh, improperly translated as coming. Why? Because the general idea is that uh, uh, the Christians believe that a uh, second coming will happen. But uh, they don't think it's a second presence. So they will tell, coming, coming, coming is what? Uh, is still coming, not at come. Very far, is still coming on the way, on the way, on the way. But the same word which is used actually is from the word, uh, you see, uh, 
parosha parosha means not coming but presence sir. let us read few verses brother matthew 24 37 brother matthew 24 37 what <clears throat> as the day of, of no But as the day of Noah's were, so, so shall also the coming of the son of the man be. See, it says, as the days of Noah was, so shall also the coming of the son of man be. See here, that word coming is actually from Greek, uh, parousia. See, the same word is translated in book of Luke, you know, as what? It is translated as it's a presence of our Lord. It is never translated as coming of our Lord. Let us see that verse in Luke. Luke, brother, 17.26. Can somebody read? Luke 17.26. <clears throat> and as it was written in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. See? As it was in the days of Noah. So shall it be also in the days of Son of Man. It's the same word in Matthew 24, 37. It is translated as coming of the Son of Man. But in Luke, it is not translated as coming. It is translated in the days. In the days means in his days. In his days means what? In the day when uh, Son of Man will be there. <clears throat> you see, brethren, huh? it says in the days of uh, Noah. Now you tell me, in the days of Noah, was Noah present or not? Yes. yes Noah was he present. was there. Yes, he was present. It was his days. So similarly, in the days of Son of Man means, will he be there or will he be coming very far? He will be there. He will be there. That is be the there. Meaning. Yes, correct brother. That is the proper word. And the proper translation of the word parosia. You see, this word actually comes several times in Matthew 24 chapter. Third verse, 27th verse, 37th verse, 39th verse. But in all the incidents in KJV Bible, they are translated as coming. Why? Because they generally think that Christ is huh, going to come. Come means when? when? They don't know, no? That is in the world, he's going to come, 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 coming, 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 coming. I keep on coming from 2000 years. Huh? Now, let us see the same word uh, in you know, Nepali Bible. Let me see how does it come in Nepali Bible. Can somebody read, brother? Matthew 24 3. <clears throat> Matthew 24 3, brother. Nepali Bible. <laughs> Agam. Agam. Agam means what? Coming. Eh? Hindi Bible? You got any? Anybody got Hindi Bible? No. No, uh, no Hindi Bible. Eh? Okay. In Kannada, they have put correctly. Eh? You know how they have put in Kannada? Eh? Prasannam. Eh? Hindi mein kya bolte hai? Hindi mein bolte hai, no? Kya bolte hai? Aapka eh? Prasann kaboga. A Yuga Antya or Apka Prasan Kaboga Karke Disciples Ne Esu Prabhuko Eka Koshan Puchata Usika Uttar Amara Prabhune Matthew twenty four three media. You see, Jesus gave the same reply about uh, signs. They could have clearly told, no? Why you give signs? Sir? Because this is a science to recognize his invisible presence. Sir. Therefore, as no one present in his days, similarly, in the days of uh, our Lord, Lord should be there. Okay? Therefore, you see, when uh, Jesus uh, wanders, no? What did he want us? Uh? Somebody says, uh, I'm in the desert, don't believe it. If somebody says, I'll come in a secret chamber, huh? speaking only to you, don't believe. So many people tell, no? Yo, I was praying, Jesus came to me and spoke to me. He came and sat with me at dinner in winter. Huh? If Jesus came and sat with them and, uh, uh, you see, spoke to them, they could ask, no, Jesus, when are you going to come permanently? You're coming and going, coming and going. Why don't you come permanently for the second coming? Huh? They could ask, no. 
they could ask no when you are going to return you are told in the bible that nobody knows eh? you are told in the bible that you are going to come very soon you are already come very soon when you are going to come permanently they could ask no why don't they ask uh, they have ran these are the things we need to think therefore in matthew 24 chapter lord gave the signs of his presence when he is going to be on this earth you see and what are the things uh, that are going to happen through which uh, we can identify that our lord is written that is what is given in matthew 24 chapter now let us read a few verses matthew 24 4 to 6 brother <clears throat> matthew 24 chapter verses 4 to 6 <clears throat> and jesus answered and said unto them take heed that no man deceive you for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not it. See, he says, uh... You shall hear about wars and rumors of wars. As soon as we entered the 19th century, the Great World War began. You see, the Great First World War began, dear brethren. Then, after this Great World War, one, World War Two also happened, dear brethren. Now, what has happened? After the Second World War, almost every year, there is a war. <clears throat> Russian Civil War, Spanish War, Arab-Israel War, Korean War, Vietnam War, Afghanistan War, Iran-Iraq War, Kuwait, Gulf War, Syrian Civil War, Mexico Crisis, Yemen Crisis, Sri Lanka LTT War, India-Pakistan Kargil War, Myanmar Crisis, Libya, Egypt, Taliban, ISS, Armenia, <clears throat> Azerbaijan. And now, what? Ukraine and Russia. Huh? Every place you take, every country there is war. Almost there is a war between, you see, India and China. Even at the Nepal border, no? So, what is that? Rumors about war. You see, dear brethren, now the world is preparing for what? Future third world war, which is already given in the Bible. Dear brethren, now there is a new type of war. You see, biological war. Corona, what is that one now? You man-made, you virus. That's a biological warfare. You see? And uh, in the future, uh, man won't. Uh, uh, you see, go as a soldier itself, dear brother. It will be an unmanned aircraft. It is using unmanned aircraft only. The Taliban were defeated. Uh, you see? Uh, now, new types of soldiers have been manufactured. Robotic soldiers. Uh, you see? In the future... Everybody will be sitting in their home and playing this video game and war will happen uh, between whom? Uh, unmanned, uh, you see, equipment, uh, dear brethren. This is the future of our warfare. Today, dear brethren, there are so much of nuclear weapons in the world. You see, the world, world can be destroyed more than 100 times. Since. So much of nuclear bombs, you see, have been accumulated for what purpose, uh? To destroy each other. That's what the Bible says. You shall hear about wars. And rumors about wars. Today we can see every day in our news. There's always a continuous line going. Breaking news. Breaking news. Breaking news. Just see. A few 20 years before. This breaking news was rarely coming. But now. Today it has got stuck to TV. Because why? Without breaking news, there is no news at all. Everything, every news is breaking only. That's what uh, rumors, news about wars. Huh? Then uh, Matthew 24, 7, brother. Uh, read, brother. Gopal, brother, read. Matthew 24, 7. Hmm. <clears throat> For nations shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and for, for to, uh, pestilences. For to, Pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. See? Nation shall rise again, nation. Nepal, Assam, Kashmir. Farmers are protesting against Article 370. Various revolt, various strikes each and every day, brethren. What is happening? People are rising against people. Religion against religion. 
isn't it is there no warfare every day it is there every day you can see in the world your brother this is what is happening uh, uh, a nation against nation a state against state uh, a people against the people uh, you see uh, they have run uh, tamilians against the sri lankans uh, hindus against the muslims uh, you see muslims against the christians uh, this is what is happening dear brother uh, uh, then famines uh, you see dear brother there is so much of famine uh, in this world in africa the people even don't have a proper food dear brother <clears throat> you see so much malnutrition we can see all over in uh, north karnataka also lot of places uh, hmm? so what is happening uh, famine then pestilences pestilences means what uh, not uh, ordinary small small diseases but pandemic diseases uh, the great uh, example of pandemic disease is the recent uh, corona you see just one corona man made invisible virus he shook the earth like anything two years dear brother everybody was totally shattered so many months they were locked down this is all bible prophecy read habakkuk 35 habakkuk 35 brother ha habakkuk 35 You're all there on nine, huh? Read, brother. Habakkuk three five. Hmm. And burning coals went. Ah, uh, read, brother. Read loudly. Ashish, brother, your my audio is not clear. Ah, okay. uh, read, brother. Go for brother. Habakkuk three five. Before him went the pestilence. and burning coals went forth at his feet see before him went the pestilences that means in front of him huh? at his presence what is there it seems pestilences read verse 2 brother ha huh? habakkuk 3 2 brother ha huh? oh lord i have heard thy speech and was afraid oh lord revive thy work in the midst of the years in the midst of the years make known in wrath remember mercy hmm three also brother one minute abba ko abba ko hmm third chapter <clears throat> verse three, brother. Uh, sorry, verse uh, four. You read, brother. Sorry, verse four. Correct. Um. And his brightness was as the light. He had horns coming out of his hand, and there was the hiding of his power. Hmm. The verse three. Hmm. God came from Taman, and the Holy One from Mount Paran. Hmm. Sela, his glory covered the heavens, and the earth was full of his praise. See, his glory covered the heavens; the earth was full of his praise. Verse four, and his brightness was as light. Verse five tells, before him went a pestilence. So the pestilences are a clear sign that we are living in the Lord's day, in the Lord's presence. And what does he say? Matthew twenty-four seven, huh? Pestilences and earthquake, uh, and no need for me to tell you about earthquake. Yeah, you had lot of earthquake between just uh, two three days before, isn't it? So before this one also, uh, there was a heavy earthquake in Nepal. No, everything was shattered. How many years before? Just three to four years before. No, so so frequently what is happening? Uh, all around the world, the earthquake has become very common. They were then. So these are the signs of a lot. So, presence not the signs of a lord's coming then it says you see uh, how this uh, earthquake uh, and uh, pestilences will happen it seems uh, this will not uh, be in a very small scale this is speaking about a very larger scale where the entire world will be affected read with the look 21 25 and 26 look 21st chapter 25 and 26 <clears throat> Can somebody read firstly? 
and there shall be a sign in the sun and in the moon and in the and upon the earth distress of nations uh, with with perplexity the sea and the waves roaring men's heart falling failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be second okay. what is happening sir upon earth distress of nation perplexity which uh, nation has peace there is no peace every nation is totally confused dear brethren they are living in a very dangerous situation very you see fearful condition that's what he says and the sea and the waves roaring seeing this sea and the waves roaring men's heart shall fail them for fear it seems sir tsunami have you ever heard this word tsunami 20 years before no suddenly imagine the tsunami came nobody could imagine that such a huge wave could destroy the entire you see huh? places sir uh, totally everybody was dead everything was shattered huge building was taken off uh, just uh, like from the foundation of brahman how seeing this men's heart should fail them of fear it seems looking up the things which are coming on this earth why because the power of the heaven is being shaken this is the sign of a lord's presence now read matthew 24 15 what is the other sign of a lord's presence matthew 24 15 hmm. when he therefore shall see the abominations of desolation spoke of by daniel the prophet stand in the holy place who so read it let him understand understand so jesus is uh, speaking about the the great antichrist the abomination will make it this way we already studied this one now so antichrist already has come and the major period is over this is also a sign that we are living in the lord's day that we are living in his presence they but we said about antichrist the triple six is not a literal number where it is put on a head and hand it is actually the number of the beast the calculation uh, to say of the title of uh, vicarious felidi with uh, pope uh, as kept for himself then what is the other sign uh, matthew 24 23 and 24 brother ha huh? matthew 24 23 and 24 hmm. then then if any man shall say unto you lo here is christ or there believe it not for there shall arise false christs and false prophets and shall shew great signs and wonders in so much that if it were possible they shall deceive the very elect you see one of the signs of his presence that we living in his day is that the false christ and false prophets will come what they will do they will come and do great signs and wonders in so such a big way that even those people who are called to the truth they will also be deceived so today why suddenly these miracles have come up so many years it was not there two hundred years and it is not there but suddenly how did it come up this is all the deception of the devil to counter attack the lord's establishment of his kingdom on this earth he knows very well that christ has come now and is destroying his empire is destroying his kingdom to establish his own kingdom will he keep quiet no therefore what is happening false miracles uh, to deceive the people uh, into you see darkness and the same time sin is getting abound read brother matthew 24 12 uh, home brother you there matthew 24 12 can you read yes sir hmm. and because in iniquity shall abound the love of many shall wax cold See? because iniquity shall abound love of many shall wax cold iniquity you see sin you see now where there is culture ah huh? where there is respect for god the people are fighting ah huh? that they may marry a man with a man and a woman with a woman it seems sir disco club bar you see vulgar things and all films dirty films serials games 
drinks, smoking, drugs, abuse. You see? Huh? Then, huh? live in relationship, mobile phone, shopping malls, dear brethren, these are spoiling uh, the younger generation. So, what is happening? Uh, there is no respect for God at all. Uh, iniquity is abounding. Yes, what is happening? There is no really love about God at all. See the hair cutting and all. The Bible says you should never have such hair cutting, sir. Uh, the people, they don't even wear proper clothes, sir. Bible says a woman should never wear a man's dress and a man should never wear a woman's dress. But today, what is there? No difference between male and female at all. Both are putting pant and shirt. Both are having long hair, sir. How do you identify? We don't know. Both don't have mustache also. Such is the condition of this world. Therefore, this is also a sign of the Lord's presence. Then Matthew 24, 14, brother. For verse 14. Mm. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Okay. Gospel of the kingdom shall be preached to all nations. What does it mean? Huh? Many people think that, oh, the word of God shall be preached to everybody and everybody get converted. No. He says, the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached to all nations for a witness, not for the conversion of the world. And this witness is already been given as per the reports of the Bible Society. You see, when 1881, the Bible Society came up, it was, the Bible was translated into all the languages of this world. You see, this witness was given to the entire world. Today, nobody can say that nobody knows about Jesus Christ. Everybody knows about Jesus Christ, though they have not accepted Jesus as a savior. Yet, this witness has gone to the whole world. Next sign, Matthew 24, 29, brother. Matthew 24, 29. Mm. Matthew 24, 29. Mm. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the power of the heaven shall be shaken. He says, sun shall be darkened and moon shall not give her light. This is literally happened, you know, when? Huh? Sunday, the May 1970, 18, you see, early morning, when the sun was at the noon, immediately the entire sun was totally darkened. It was not for only just for a few minutes as it happens in solar eclipse. It happened for the entire day, dear brethren. This happened in America. This is recorded in America. Why? Because Americans are not the orthodox religious people. Whenever such things happen, they keep a record of these, these things and do it in scientific research. But the same things would have happened in India and various other papers or places also. But as these people are very religious and orthodox, they don't maintain such records at all. They wouldn't. Instead of that, they would have offered some sacrifices and do some religious activity and all the other. Therefore, this has already happened in May 19th, 1780. And the very next day, you see, May 20th, 1780, uh, the moon did not give its light for one day. And not only this one, this has happened very frequently also. During Kuwait war, you see, there was no sunlight on entire Kuwait for more than 30 days, sir. You see, not even the moonlight, not even the sunlight, nothing. It was totally pitch darkness, dear brethren. So that was the condition during the days, uh, uh, you see. That's what the Bible says. Then, he says, the stars um, of the heaven shall fall. What is the stars? Uh? This is not the stars, dear brethren. We know that uh, the, each and every stars are sky. And which is the stars? If you see, these are the shooting stars. Uh, yeah? Isn't it? Meter showers. Uh. We read it in the Bible, no? So this is uh, actually... Bible says so. So we have seen recently meteoric showers in all over the world, especially in Russia and all. So this is the sign of the Lord's presence, not a sign of his coming. A sign that is already been present here. Now let us read one more sign. Uh, Matthew 24, 21, brother. Huh? Matthew 24, 21. Mm. Gopal, brother. Mm. For then shall be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time. No, nor even shall be. 
See, a great tribulation will be reached, sir. What is this great tribulation? Day, brethren? You see, a great tribulation means uh, uh, the great trouble in this world. Uh, today we are living in the same condition. Only. Therefore, you see, in the Bible, uh, the tribulations, trouble are compared to clouds in the Bible. Let us read a few verses, brother. Joel 2 2 and Zephyr 1 15. Uh, Gopal, brother, you can read one verse, and Noham, brother, can you read one verse? Zephaniah 115, hmm. that day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of wastelessness and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness. Hmm. A day of clouds and thick darkness. You see, that is the thick darkness. That is the trouble, dear brethren. Therefore, same verse comes in Joel 2, 2, 2 also. Therefore, you see, huh? How do we see Jesus? Sir? What did Jesus say? Behold, he cometh on a clouds. Huh? Every eye shall see him. Huh? Correct? Huh? That's what the Bible says. No? What is the meaning of clouds in the Bible? Clouds means trouble. That's what we read now in Zephania. Huh? We read now. What does it say? Huh? Huh? A day of clouds and thick darkness. And this the clouds and darkness is coming to day of trouble and distress. So in the Bible, Clouds always signify trouble and distress. In this trouble only, Jesus will be, you see, understood by everybody that he is the one who is ruling invisibly in the earth atmosphere. This is a sign of a Lord, sir. You see, uh, second uh, presence to your Now let us read uh, one more uh, sign in Matthew 24 32. Brother. Matthew 24 32. Brother, huh? Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender and put it forth leaves, ye know that summer is in e summer is night. Night. So Jesus is speaking about a fig tree, it seems. He says, learn the from the parable of the fig tree. When it put it forth leaves, understood that it's very nigh. Huh? So what is the meaning of this fig tree? Huh? You all remember the story now? When Jesus was uh, uh, coming uh, uh, to Israel, you see? He sees from far about a fig tree. It was full of leaves and very fresh. So Jesus came near to pluck some fruits. Did he find any fruit in the fig tree? No. 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 So what happened? Immediately he cursed the fig tree. It dried immediately, it seems. So what is this fig tree? The same fig tree Jesus says, when I return again, during my presence, in front of me, as the fig tree dried, in the front of me, the same fig tree will again sprout up. So what is this fig tree? Let us read Luke 21, 29 to 31, brother. Luke 21st chapter, 29 to 31. And he spake to them a parable, Behold the fig tree and all the trees, when they now stood forth, ye see and know of your own selves that summer is now near at hand. So likewise, ye whom ye see these things come to pass, know ye that the kingdom of God is near at ah. hand. So by seeing the victory, we can really know how near the kingdom is there. What did Jesus say? Did he mention only about the victory? He also tells all the other trees. So we should see victory and all the other trees. So what is the meaning of victory in the Bible? Huh? A fig tree in the Bible means the nation of Israel. Read Osea 9 10, brother. Osea 9 10. Home brother, can you read? Okay, Ashish brother, can you read? I found Israel like grapes in the wilderness. I saw your father said the first stripe in the tree at the first time. But they went to Balpur and separated themselves unto that same, and their abominations were according is the love. See? What does it say? I saw your fathers as a first ripe in the fig tree. So the fathers of nation of Israel are like the fig fruit. Then what is the tree from which they grew? It is the nation of Israel from which they came out in which they grow. 
in which they developed uh, that is the nation of israel that is the fig tree they began so in the bible fig tree means nation of israel therefore at the first advent jesus saw the nation of israel from far he came down from heaven to earth to seek the fruit there was no fruit he cursed the nation of israel but the second advent he says what fig tree i cursed is going to sprout again that means israel as a nation was destroyed when our lord died on the cross 70 ad israel was totally destroyed there was no israel nation in the world map <coughs> till 1878 but israel is now a nation may 14th 1948 what happened israel got their independence this is a sign that we are living in the lord's presence that's what jesus says jesus also says huh eh, to see fig tree and other trees it seems the fig tree means israel other tree means what other nations dear brethren since 1940s many countries have got freedom huh eh? like for example india 1947 sri lanka pakistan bangladesh only in africa more than 50 countries have got their freedom it seems huh? hong kong was also under the captivity of british empire you see we got freedom when these are all the signs of our lord's presence therefore jesus said behold the fig tree and all the other trees uh, know that it is very near huh? now let us read one more sign in uh, daniel 12 chapter verse 4 daniel 12 4 brother huh? daniel 12 4 brother huh? But thou, O Daniel, set up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. See? What did Jesus, uh, Daniel say? Huh? What did God tell to Daniel? Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book till the time of the end. Now, what will be at the time of the end? What is the sign? Many shall run to and fro. Knowledge shall increase his himself. What is this meaning, this uh, words, dear brethren? You see, this represents the increase in knowledge in the future at the end time when the Lord is going to return. And uh, you see what will happen? Many shall run to and fro. This represents the transportation, dear brethren. Today, you see, man is traveling at the speed of more than you see thousand five hundred kilometers per hour, dear brethren. Huh? Initially, man used to travel on a bullock cart. You know. Isaac Newton was a Bible student. He read this verse and he told, he foretold that in the future, mankind will travel at the speed of sixty kilometers per hour. You know, the world at that time called him as a mad person. But today, if anybody is traveling less than sixty kilometers, they will call him a mad person because the technology is like that. You see the brilliant technology and the development, dear brethren. First, uh, there was a charcoal engine. Now. Electric train, at a bullet train, at a speed of six hundred to seven hundred miles per hour, it seems. Huh? Earlier, used to be a very small aircraft, but today, Boeing three eighty, three hundred eighty people can travel at a time in air, it seems. Not only one mankind today, where is he going? Ah, he is going to space. There is railway station, there is bus station. Huh? There is a yeah. Huh? Air drum, airplane station, huh? airport, everything. But today, what has happened? Ah, recently, space station has come. If you want to go for sightseeing for space, you can go and come. Go and come again, and whenever you want, you can go and come, dear brethren. And today, man is going even for moon and Mars. This is the man running to and fro, dear brethren. And today, electrical vehicles. Huh? Imagine, just uh, one ten years before, uh, did anybody dream about any electric vehicles? Huh? Today, what has happened? This is the trend that you are brethren. And future, without even electricity, magnetic vehicles will also come. You see, that is the you see future ah uh, uh, technology. And dear brethren, what is happening? Ah, uh, uh, just see this ah uh, that lady. She is actually android a uh, robot. Uh, this is real and this, she is ah uh, uh, in Dubai. Ah, uh, just see that android mobile. Ah, uh, sorry, android ah uh, 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 what do you say? Humanoid. Sorry, humanoid. Uh, she seems to be a real uh, woman, but actually she is a uh, humanoid robot, dear brethren. Uh, she looks to be very real. Uh, this is the development. And see this right side. You can see the years. 
See the table. All the things are vanishing. How many things were table on the table? Whether a fax machine, or books, or phones, or landline. You see printer huh? and portrait or photos. Or you see frames. Or all these things in Dalla. Newspapers, everything. But today, what has happened? Everything is gone yesterday. Everything is gone. Everything is compressed. Everything. And it is coming up in a laptop. It came in a laptop. Now, today, not even laptop. You, you just have it in your hand. Uh, in just an Android or mobile. Day. Today, what you are in classes, sir? This is also increase of knowledge. Uh, did we ever imagine that we are going to take class to Nepal, sitting from in India, from Bangalore, in live classes with all this uh, technology, with uh, screen sharing, with the PowerPoint, everything and all? Dear brother, so much of time has been saved, so much of money. This is the increase in knowledge. Uh, that's what uh, Daniel says. Uh, Jay Badran, uh, uh, this, uh, see this uh, uh, science and all, these are all uh, the future technology. Uh, so what is going to happen, Jay Badran? Uh, so, uh, even this one also you can see, uh, hybrid fruits. Uh, you can see no hybrid fruits. Uh, this is also a sign of a Lord's presence. Uh, you know, when the people of Israel uh, went to the land of Canaan, how did they bring the fruits? Uh? They brought it up on the shoulders. Uh, hybrid. Uh, you see, such is the technology today. Uh, the harvest is plenty. You see, uh, see the wonderful uh, uh, fruits and the vegetables which Lord has blessed. Uh, this is actually a sign of a Lord's uh, presence. Uh, not that uh, he is coming, but that he is already present. Uh, and uh, you see, it is his uh, kingdom. Uh, and these are all uh, the signs of a uh, Lord's uh, Presence at your present. So these are all, you see, the increase in knowledge and man shall run to and fro. Even you see the harvest. Earlier, you see, man used to do the harvest. And now, so much of equipment have come that man can do the harvest within a fraction of a, you see, hours, acres together. A single man can handle all these things and all using modern equipment. So this is all the blessing of the Lord's presence, dear brethren. Okay, and uh, see here also you can see the latest technology. You see, uh, this is a, uh, a future mobile. You see? No need to have the mobile at all, but uh, with just uh, uh, using the lenses in your uh, eyes and uh, and so you can see and scan everything and you can communicate uh, to everybody. So future is, you know, what is going to happen? There's going to be a system everywhere there won't be any equipment at all, but you can see the laptop and the screen, everything in the air, whichever place you go. <coughs> Dear brethren, these are all the clear signs of our <coughs> Lord's presence. Knowledge shall increase and man shall run to and fro. A lot of examples I can give with them. Just uh, See your day to day activities, whatever the fan we use, the laptop we use, the phones we use, the headphones we use, the mics we use, the lights we use, <coughs> the LED bulbs we use. You see, the tables, the cameras, everything is actually the blessings of the Lord's second presence. And one more time we'll see in First Corinthians 4 5, brother. First Corinthians 4 5. Can somebody read? Therefore, judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, who both will bring to hmm. light hmm. the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts. And then shall every man have praise of God. Very good. So it says, judge nothing before the Lord comes. When the Lord comes, what will he do? Him, sir? He will bring every hidden things to light. Him. All the things which are done in darkness will be brought to light. Today, what is happening? All the things which were done in secret, let it be any scandal, any theft, any murder, any rape, any corruption, any drug case, anything, dear brother, everything is brought to broad daylight on news, live telecast. How? In real time. How? Increase in knowledge. Lord is bringing Everything into justice, dear brethren. You might be having in your place also. So in our place, you see, whenever corruption happens, it's been telecast live. You see, today, the police catches us means he fears us to take uh, any fine. 
because uh, without his knowledge, there'll be some hidden camera and it'll be lively telecasted on the news channels. Uh. So this is actually a sign of a Lord's presence. Uh. Even Donald Trump, uh, Bill Clinton, you see, America president, they also did not, were not allowed. Uh. You see, they were also not spared. Uh. They were also brought to justice. Uh. So this is all the sign of the Lord's uh, presence. Uh. So dear brethren, so these and many signs are there to prove that uh, our Lord has already returned and he started to establish his kingdom. So, dear brethren, <clears throat> in the uh, so classes, what you have seen is that uh, you have seen why Jesus' the second coming is going to happen, the general expectations, how Jesus is going to come, how to identify Jesus. It is only through the signs, and these signs which you can see in the world, these are the clear proof that uh, we are uh, living in his day. As Satan was ruling, but you could not see him, but yet we could identify through the signs. So similarly, through these signs, we can identify that there is a Lord's reign. So in the next class, we are going to see if a Lord has written, when did he return? Okay, this one we are going to see in the next coming class. Okay, so uh, Lord bless. <clears throat> huh? Any doubts, any questions, you can ask.